Boom. Okay, Scott Evans and Zuri Hall, I'm excited to speak with you both today. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Come on, Mom. <laughs> no, it's you guys. I saw all your clips and everything. You guys are hilarious on the red carpet. We have a blast. We have we a blast. Have it's I think that it's a it's a really fun experience to be able to work with someone that you call a friend, mm -hmm. right? To be able to stand next to someone that you trust and that be, that you believe in and that believes in you. We've been at this together for a long time, mm -hmm. working in this industry a long time. And so to finally be in a space where we feel like we really can own it, yeah. you see that I think in, in our pieces. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the chemistry is definitely there and he makes it easy. You know, he's so much fun. Like you said, we go back more than a decade at this point. More. We're both like Midwest kids. I'm Ohio, he's Indiana. Mm -hmm. So to be in Hollywood sharing space now on the, sh the same screen, it's really special. Nice. I love that. I would love to get both of your perspectives on your journey on how you were able to get up to this level because you're living the dream and so many people move to LA for that, you know, and they sometimes don't even get the taste of it and you are living it. I'm going to tell you that don't nobody look better living it than Zuri Hall. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a star. <laughs> She was, the face never gets declined on the face I, call. Like, for real. She was on a carpet she was on a carpet recently and people were like shouting at her and like over your shoulder. Who you? It was at one point it was like, y'all need to calm down. Okay. <laughs> She's going to stand here for as long as we need. Relax. Oh she was like, <laughs> <laughs> one more picture. One more picture. Yeah. Scott, aim low. Aim low. She, she was like, <laughs> we got time. <laughs> oh, we always got time for the angles. We got to make time for the angles. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Where is um? Where did you guys both get your beginning in Hollywood? You know what? Well, so that's the craziest part, right? I said we go back more than a decade. I won a competition in local news that kind of started off my TV career. Mm -hmm. He was the first person to have ever won that competition. He literally handed the torch to oh, me. Wow. So I was the second. So we both started in local news, worked our way up. Uh, my first start in Hollywood proper, I was always aiming for national by 25. So I was in local news at 24 and I got an opportunity to host a show called Trending 10 on Fuse at 24. So I moved to New York, didn't look back and just kind of hit the ground running, went to MTV. And my next goal was E actually, E News by 30, I said, because that was sort of like entertainment news, creme de la creme at yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah. You know, you had Seacrest, Julian Rancic, all the greats. Um, and so I got that opportunity a few years earlier than I expected. Packed up, left for Los Angeles, spent five incredible years there. And then I was like, I'm trying to get to broadcast network. Let's Let try to get to NBC. I mean, what we do, what we do. <laughs> she wanted the checks. She wanted the right checks. That's what she wanted. <laughs> she wanted those right checks. Exactly. <laughs> so I've been at Access Hollywood for, gosh, almost, man, time is flying. Almost four years now. I don't even like the, the violence. The violence in the, in the words you just spoke. We're getting old, bro. We're getting old. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so that that's my my journey to Hollywood. You were saying, you kind of bounced around, but you did New York to LA too. Yeah, so the, it's it's so funny. Like you you hear someone like Zuri talk about their career and a talk about and talk about the 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 intention and the the planning that went into here are the things that I want to achieve in my career. Here are the things that I want to see in my life, and I'm going to work out getting them by these times. Right? I did it. We knew it. Have that are you an I air just, sign huh are you an air sign because then it sounds That's like serious, no we in here fiery hot, what? hot sweating just also constantly confused you know what i mean like lost like you know we'll figure it out when we get over here I like i'm not even this. i'm not even <laughs> i'm also not even tripping like, like when we God, get there we uh, oh, bet, bet. Yeah. get my steps in the thing about it is that like I knew at a young age, third grade, I was booked on my first gig um, playing a young Reggie Miller against a young Larry Bird for the player intro videos for the Indiana Pacers. And it was then that I knew like I got a day out of school and I got 50 bucks. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, this TV thing. I'm doing that. That's me now. Mm -hmm. And um, really then went about taking every single opportunity I could to learn as much of the craft, as much of the process, as much of what it meant to be 
in video production um, as early as possible. We had a television show in high school called 360 Degrees. It's literally still my email address, right? From that, from that uh, uh, television show. I always wondered every time I email you, like, what is the 360? In <laughs> okay, so that's, the more you know, I've known it for more than a decade, just finding that out. But I'm found. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was it was this youth produced and directed television show. We talked about everything, and I learned the basics of telling a story through the video medium, and then took that. Literally working for Hard News and CBS, I, I anchored the Channel One newscast in New York City. Um, also famously anchored by Maria Menounos, Anderson Cooper, Lisa Ling, and I did that because I wanted to to dive headfirst into what felt like legitimate hard news, but in a way that you're helping to also craft the opinions and the perspectives of the next leaders, right? Like we were directly, we aired directly in schools across the country. Millions of kids every day watch the show, and then. After years of covering like Boko Haram, right, and uh, terrorist attacks and, and things like that, I was like, okay, we can ease it on. Up. You're too heavy on my uh, spirit every day. I got to wake up and do this. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and it's important work. And I, and I don't mean any, that's no shade or any, any slight to people who are still involved heavily in the hard news game. Like we need them, right? Um, but I knew that I wanted to shift to something else. And so when the Access Hollywood opportunity came about, um, I went full force, and I mean full force, and starting as the guest correspondent in New York, then the East Coast correspondent, and then um, uh, uh, the host, a host of the show here in in um, L.A., the the idea, it was the first time I put on myself that, that kind of plan for a time, and fast-tracked going from guest correspondent to host quicker than I, I think anyone else has done on the show, so um, to be the 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 black man holding down the host position on the show you know i, I took it really seriously as you can see <laughs> um uh but it was important that we had that kind of representation that people would be able to watch our show and see us and so when zuri came apart came to be a part of the show it was like we're we are really yeah. um uh front and center we are really claiming this space and nobody can take it away from us Nice. I love to hear that, especially talking about representation and culture and being black. And you guys are both, you all are, I'm always want to make sure I'm very cognizant of uh, pronouns. You oh. both very, very black on the carpet. You know what I mean? And I love that. Is there any type of pressure sometimes to dial down the cultural aspects or do you have the free range or is it one of those things because you're interviewing a diverse cast of people, right? Do you have to still have some type of like that, you know, TV voice or that TV right. thing, or if that makes sense? I will say, you know, coming from local news, there was certainly maybe that pressure, that implication, or maybe just that shadow, even if it was never directly articulated to you. But we know where we come from. We know what we've been through as a people when it comes to trying to make waves in this industry and how we've been pushed down and told to mute ourselves. So there was maybe that in the back of my mind in local news and trying to force myself to just show up even in moments when it might have felt uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But what I think is really special about the time we find ourselves in now and what is so beautiful about us, about Black people, period it is the energy we bring the hmm. culture we bring hmm. what we bring hmm. is what everybody else is trying to recreate anyway so to be turning down the thing that everybody else is trying to buy trying to borrow, you know what i'm saying like it's just natural so what we are bringing to the carpet is the very thing that people want to be watching so it feels really great to be at a show and to be in a space where that isn't just encouraged but it's expected like they would expect nothing less you know i was thinking about when we covered the was it the oscars together looking like matching cupcakes looking like a gender reveal yeah, party yeah we was there. <laughs> so i was like all Baby pink, scabbing her baby powder blue, looking like 1970s prom. It was, we were having so much fun. We were loud. We were extra. It was the best time ever to the point Serena Williams walks over. Half the time, you have to like beg, borrow, and steal to get Half people the time. to come, right? When I tell you people would be in an interview with another outlet and literally pop their head out, like, I'm trying to go over there. Serena walked over to us and was like, this is clearly where the party's the at. So party this is where is. I want to be. And we got the interview. Mm -hmm. But I think that energy, is, it's um, it's contagious. People want to be a part of it. So turning it down, no. But we will absolutely turn it up. And I think also you know what it means to be a Black person um, operating in whatever space you're operating in, mm -hmm. right? And, and making the decision to take up space, making the decision to claim the spot on which you stand, right? So whether it's someone, whether that makes someone else uncomfortable 
um, in their own scenario, in their own situation, is really less of your business. And I think that they're, especially in, in a post-COVID uh, quarantine lockdown scenario, I think, I, I won't speak for Zuri, but I know that I certainly came to um, uh, um, an awakening uh, in myself that was like, if I've ever been waiting for a time, if I ever thought I was waiting for a time where I could be more myself or I wasn't totally myself where I, I finally would feel comfortable, we're not doing that anymore. Like it's gonna be all me all the time. Um, and this is what it is. And one of the, the the biggest compliments I think that Zuri and I get, um, I've seen it happen to Zuri, so I know it it, it has been the case. And, it, and when it happens to me, like it's the best thing someone can say to me when they say, "Hey, you are just like you are on TV." Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that yeah. that means that the the intention that intention is being received in the same kind of energy with that same kind of feeling. Absolutely. And and to add to that, like I, I think so often about integrity it's one of my biggest core values arguably my top core value and to live in a state of integrity you really have to be in alignment in all areas of your life mm -hmm. and i just got to the point where it would be exhausting to have to code switch to have to show up on camera one way and then show up another in my my personal life with my family with my friends i want to be the same zuri no matter where i am and mm -hmm. i found that i became much more happy mm -hmm. in, in my job in in this industry in my life when who i I am behind the scenes is exactly how I presented on camera. So I think that's been the, the biggest blessing of just showing up the same way everywhere you go is, you know, you ain't got to switch about turning it up or down. Yeah, you don't have to switch. Well, I'm going to tell you this real quick. And it might have got us in trouble. Oh, We're at the was it, Golden Globes. <laughs> Steven Spielberg walked back. And I don't know. See, Zuri had already talked to him. So she yeah, they yeah. had a rapport <laughs> on the carpet. I it's, missed that. He, I went in heavy. I was like, Brother, brother, he was like looking around. I was like, "Oh, you, see you, you done done it again." He was like, what? "I was like, I'm sorry, Stephen. Can I call you Steve? Can I call you Steve? I apologize." <laughs> Meanwhile, I was like, "Look at my cousin over there. Oh my Look at my cousin Steve. He didn't oh. know what." I love that. You, you both got that chemistry. He, was, he, he, just didn't he was like, he was like, normally when you, you know, you go to shake somebody's hand, yeah. you're like, yeah, put her there. He's so caught off guard. He was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh great. it's great. I love that. I want to get into both of your individual projects, but I want to ask one question more before we switch over for you both. What is something we don't see? Because you mentioned it's like you have to vie for someone's attention to interview. What don't people get about being a correspondent and a host on these carpets? You know, they see the glitz and glam and they think like, oh man, I see um, you interviewing this person, that person. What don't they see that really is a thing where I'm like, if y'all only knew. Whew. How much time we got? <laughs> he's like, he's like, how much time we got? Uh, listen, we go, you, is this a series? It's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode one with Zuri and Scott. Um, issue Listen, don't see. <laughs> if you only knew episode one, uh, Zuri, you take this. Well, one. I will say what you know because especially for the ladies, traditionally speaking, you know we love to bring the looks, we got the fashion or whatever. But it is so chaotic on these carpets. More often than not, I could be in a full ball, ball gown. And if it is an option, I will be in chucks on the bottom. I will have my sneakers on. I will kick the heels off in a minute and be barefoot, just risking all types of disease on the <laughs> But what you also what you also should know is that she gonna get the photo first. Oh. <laughs> Zuri, over your shoulder. I will stop mid-interview. <laughs> Because what you're not going to do is catch me slipping because these photos last forever. And they last shuffle. forever. So yeah. comfort is key. The, the, the um, what would you call them? Like our weeknight red carpets, not award season, but just arrival every lines. day, arrival lines, the movie premieres. There's so many people. It's so shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. What we see, right? When you go on YouTube and you see our interviews, it's yeah. me and it's Jane Fonda and it's just the two of us in the shot or it's me talking to, you know, Cheryl Lee Ralph or Denzel and it's a cute yeah. little two frame. Mm -hmm. But bumping up on me the entire time is everybody in their mama and I'm just smiling and holding the microphone and you're like y'all get or worse it's a publicist like wrap it up I don't know yeah they love oh, to give you the <laughs> could you could this be the last question yeah. <laughs> into my microphone the, <laughs> the publicist was like 
Okay, I gotta get this last question. They literally went to the mic. Can you wrap it up? <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, okay. I guess y'all got so something to this. Um, but it's really just the chaos. Like there's so much commercial and what the viewer gets to witness is the eye in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the thing that people don't realize about our job, right? It's one thing to have a really fun, interesting, engaging conversation. It's another thing to do it while all of that is happening around you. It's another thing entirely to make it look easy. Right. It is not just show up and, you know, tell and a couple of cute. jokes, have fun and some cute. Right. And I'll, I would 100% echo everything that Zuri said. And the 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 real art is in making it look easy, mm -hmm. right? And making it look like just anyone could do it. Um, I think the the thing that I would challenge anyone to to know, or the thing that that most people don't know about what we do, is that there's also a there's also an expectation that okay, I just pop in to this. Like I get mm -hmm. one of the questions I get the most often. Um, is I want to do what you do. How do I do what you do? Right. If you go on my Instagram right now, one one of the most asked questions to me is, "Hey, I love. I want to do what you do. Or I, I love your job. I would love to have your job. How did you get there?" And to, to the, I, I give the same answer uh, virtually to everyone in that if you are waiting for some show to call you, mind you, you have never done this before. Yeah. Right. If you're waiting for some show to call you or you're waiting for some Instagram um, video to take off and they'll, and, and a network was is like, that's our guy. That's our girl. I think that you might be mistaken. Right. I think that the, the benefit of all of the mediums that are out there right now, the YouTubes, the TikToks, the Instagrams, the and the various other um, startups are, that are popping up almost every day is that there are so many opportunities for you to get started today doing what if you want to do this. There, there are local celebrities around you right now. There are people you can make celebrity right now, but there's a practice that needs to go into um, this craft. It is not mm -hmm. a simple gig. And I think that you would do, I think we would do anyone a disservice by just plucking someone out and being like, all right, now do it. Yeah. I mean, you're almost destined to like fail in, in that. You, there's some practice and some failing in private yeah. that needs to happen. I think that that is beneficial to happen for you. Um, if you want to pursue this as a career. I'm glad that you brought that up because it really, it takes so much more scrappiness, I think, than people realize. Mm -hmm. There's no like sign on the dotted line, submit resume here, and then we'll call you if we want you to be the next host of whatever show. And, you know, I think of that quote, what is it, dress for the job you want or whatever it is. Even when I was back in Indianapolis, right, I was, you know, it was a local sort of lifestyle-y job, but I knew I wanted to be in entertainment news eventually. That wasn't the shoot that I was necessarily on, but anytime a celebrity stepped foot in Indianapolis. Oh, we were on it. On it. Not only was I actively pitching it, even if, you know, the news director's like, hey, we're okay with that. I would get a camera and a microphone myself. And if I had a friend at the radio station who could hook it up mm -hmm. so that I could pull up solo in my little Ford Taurus, yeah. the air didn't work, 99 hoopsie, but I was going to get this interview. But that 99 <laughs> year was a fire <laughs> year. <laughs> like 2000 something when I was whipping it. So it wasn't new, new. But <laughs> <laughs> No, I had a 96. Sir. <laughs> I had 88 years back in the day. But, Jeez. you know, I, I showed up and I got a reel together. So I remember B.O.B. back when, you know, him and Paramore had the number one hit, paper pl airplanes. The airplanes in the night sky and like shooting stars. That, right? <laughs> Anytime they pulled up, I wanted to be there and I wanted to get it on camera because even if it didn't make air, I knew that I was creating a three or four or five minute reel mm -hmm. that I could eventually go to an E! News and Access Hollywood and MTV with and say, this is what I can do. But that took a lot of um, tenacity and also a lot of self-guidance. Like nobody is going to give you the play-by-play -play because every route to this seat is so different. But the, th the thing that every one of those routes has in common is they started immediately. Yeah. So it's not about waiting till you get the job to then start, right? Like you get a, you got to get after it right now. I'll never forget being, when when doing the the face of Mindy TV, this this competition that Zuri was talking about earlier, um, we had in Indianapolis as well, there, the Indiana Black Expo is this major organization yeah. about the Right, the the culture. This it was. It is the longest running cultural exposition of its kind in the country, and its partner event was the Circle City Classic, this big HBCU uh, football game, and um, the Wendy Williams show launched on my ND TV in Indianapolis. And so Indianapolis virtually had no idea who Wendy Williams was because she was big on the radio in New York, right, yeah. um, and other markets, but primarily New York. I remember walking into our 
um, a program director's office and our the owner of Lynn Corporation, the, the Indianapolis office, uh, Wish TV, and saying, hey, if she's on our network and the show's about to launch in the fall, she should maybe be the grand marshal of the parade. Yeah. And like, so I was 20, 20 yeah. when I had that position. And so you have this 20 year old forecasting this mega success of a show that was the Wendy Williams show. I remember walking into the Circle City off Circle City Classic office and saying the very same thing. And immediately I was like, yes, I'm gonna be part of these meetings. <laughs> and they were like, thank you for your time and good day. But <laughs> Wendy Williams did become the Grand Marshal for the parade. And I tell you that story not to toot my own horn, but to say, you gotta get started and you gotta trust that if it's in you, then you have that kind of foresight. You got to find ways to plug that in and to test it. Nice. I love that. I think a lot of people need to hear that because they see you all and they, especially they think it's an overnight success. But like, I think someone, I think Kevin Hart said it, it's like, they see overnight success, but it didn't take overnight. It usually takes everybody a decade. For what you see, what you see now with all of you, it took at least a decade and no one really wants to put in that work because with Instagram, it's easier to look perfect than to really do that work. <laughs> it's yeah. a filter on here right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a filter on this right now. You get it. looked particularly cute. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Looking all dewy. Looking all dewy. But they, they, you know, the, it, within this industry in particular, and in Los Angeles, the number is seven. I feel like Oprah when I said mm -hmm. that. Were you silent or were you silenced? <laughs> um, the number is seven. You have, if there are, you, it takes seven years of consistent, concerted effort. Um, of your best work before you start seeing the fruit of that happening. And so if you're not, if you're unwilling to put in that seven, then, you know, find something else. And that's okay. That's okay. I love that. We reached our 30 minute mark, but I want to get those last two questions for you both. I always like to be conscious of I always like to be conscious of everybody's time because I know you're all super busy. Um, but Scott, can you let me know about this brand deal that you just closed? And then Zuri, I would love to talk a little bit about your mental health advocacy and things that you're doing in that um realm. Yeah, I mean the the this overall for and first look deal with NBC Universal was a dream come true for me because it, again, it was that seven year mark. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, working it within the company and wanting to do something bigger um, and and broader outside of the entertainment news show Access Hollywood, right? And so to get the kind of vote of confidence from the network and to get this deal that was structured in a way similar to the the deal that Jennifer Lopez was, uh, um, you know, awarded or or um, Megan Trainer, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm certainly not comparing myself to either of those, you know, powerhouses in media. Or, or music, but to get that kind of vote of confidence from the network and saying that we believe you to be someone who is interested in telling the kinds of stories we want to tell, we need to tell, and we trust you to help shepherd those to market um, has been incredible. And we are in now the development and, and pitch, pay, uh, pitch phase of several projects, but we're also in funded development of um, <laughs> a sports history doc series. And so for that to be, and it, what's funny about that, Michael, I'm gonna be, be brief, but what's funny about that is the same sis, the same woman who um, uh, booked me on that first gig in third grade is my co-producer. Wow. The Sports History Doc. It's actually an idea that she brought to me and was like, can we do this? And I was like, we have to do, can we do this together? And she was like, I would love nothing more. When you talk about a full circle moment, yeah. I mean, it really is, it is beautiful. And I couldn't be more proud of it so mm. oh congratulations that's amazing very quick but you're right you you look you're giving jobs now come on see but no that is the and that is really and truly the, the 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 greatest benefit it's not just about me and the gift that i have been given or the vote of confidence i've been given but to be in a position where i can help or usher in other storytellers more storytellers to that with rich um history and culture and texture and this fabric of our country you know what i mean mm -hmm. to help make sure those stories are getting told is awesome Nice. I love that. That's beautiful. Now we get over the jury. We talk about a little bit of that mental health and there's no rush over on my side. I just know you all are really busy. So I just have to be conscious of the time. We, oh, yeah. we, we, oh, he yeah. got coffee. So we're settling in. Right now, like, <laughs> no, Amanda is like, oh, she about to tap, tap on that. Like, 
I think that's the last question. Last question. Last question. <laughs> um, I'm mortified right now. <laughs> Uh, mental health is important to me. Yes, uh, I'm really big when it comes to conversations around it and removing stigma, particularly in the Black community. I have been in therapy for years. I love it. There was not even at that point a triggering moment. And I think that's a, a big thing mm -hmm. that I like to get across. Of course, there are a lot of really obvious, traumatic, concerning events where it's like, you should talk to someone. But I also really just want to encourage people to talk to someone, period. Like there does not need to be some quote unquote reason to sort of emote and speak your truth and work out the things that are in your mind or on your heart. Um, so that's something that I try to infuse in my work now. That's That's been a big priority for me when we talk about integrity. So I have my podcast. Podcast, Zuri Hall's Hot Happy Mess. It's all about embracing the hot, the happy, the mess of your life at the same time, you know, because it, 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 it's giving a mop up. Listen, you mop that up. You mop it up. Maybe with some champagne or a glass of wine, because you know I need to unwind um, sometimes. Yeah, but, but um, but that's a big deal for me. So I, I'm in partnership with iHeart and the Black Effect Podcast Network, which is led by Charlemagne the God. He's done some incredible work yes. talking about giving jobs, empowering people. Like I can't think of a better example, and I am so honored to call him a friend because of the way that he reaches back and helps empower the people around him, the people who have come up with him, and people he doesn't even know when it comes to just empowering their voices, Black voices specifically so hot happy mess is in partnership with them i'm in my second season right now of all now. things relationships mental health and wellness particularly for millennial women and my goal is really to prioritize and amplify the voices of black creators black experts black licensed therapists right my podcast is for everyone and i say that very adamantly because everyone should be listening gems. to the gems that we provide, right? So while I prioritize catering to black and brown listeners, white listeners, everybody should be listening to our contributions because we move conversations forward in an important way. And it shouldn't be siphoned off to only these people need to hear that. Everybody needs what it is we have to offer. So that's the goal with the podcast. And then also fronting the, the partnership with the Black and Missing Foundation for Access Hollywood. Incredible. Um, it's been so special to be able to sit down with the loved ones, with you know local authoritative figures to highlight the cases of missing Black people because we know that traditionally speaking our cases go underreported undersolved in you know comparison to our white counterparts so just allowing the opportunity for black people to feel heard i've realized that that in itself is often the gift you know we want leads we want to crack these cases but i have sat down with mothers and fathers of missing black children and teenagers and adults and cried with them and mm -hmm. held them and just held their hand and as hard as it can be and as bittersweet as it is i've realized that even sometimes that little bit is a gift in and of itself when we have felt so silenced and marginalized and unheard for so long, the gift of feeling seen and feeling heard is a really incredible gift. And it's something that we can give each other, which goes right back to that conversation about mental health and support and community. The gift of feeling seen and feeling heard is a beautiful one. So just trying to do that through all of my initiatives, all the work that I do and grateful that I get to do it at Access Hollywood also. No, that's really beautiful. Before we end, I would love to ask you both um, just to give me one word or mantra that you're living by this year. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got mine. Okay. <laughs> one word. I know, because I was about to be like, so technically it's two words? No. <laughs> one word. okay, one. You okay. gotta pick, okay. Just pick the one, pick yeah. one word. Okay. All right. One. You go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> you need a second? Okay, take a second. Second, second. Right. She's like, I got, I got on the left side, I got this word. Right. And on Tuesdays, I got this <laughs> word. word. Okay, you go first, because I got to think. My this is actually something that we we practiced at the beginning of the year instead of doing like a vision board Do or word, yeah. we just did we really focused on we really zeroed and we spent the whole night and a couple of days even after um, zeroing in on the word that will be kind of the filter which every decision runs through every choice runs through the it's meant to be an uh, uplifter of your spirit when you are sad it's also to be meant to be a grounder when you feel a little distracted and the word that I kept coming back to and the word I tried to shove off the table and put another word I was like I want money that's what money gonna be my word I like that money, right <laughs> And then it was like, this, that's not really the word, enrich. 
-hmm. is the word. I want to enrich the relationships that I have. I want to enrich myself and my body. I want to enrich my family. I want to enrich, don't get me wrong, the bank account. But I also want to do that because the work that I'm doing is enriching an audience that wants and needs this in such a way that there's a way made for more of it. Mm-hmm. So that's the word we keep coming back. Mm-hmm. I keep coming back to is it enrich. Enrich. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I like one word. Okay, I said I picked. Same <clears throat> <laughs> word. Because I was like, it's the she gonna word. hyphenate it. She gonna hyphenate it. Like she go, she gonna hyphenate the word. <laughs> word dash <laughs> this word. <laughs> Um, so I do something similar every year, right? Just choosing a word to sort of use as my North star, but it's truth. Truth is my word and it transcends work. It transcends personal life is being radically truthful with myself in everything in my relationships. Um, sometimes it's looking in the mirror and being honest about what I see and how I'm showing up and maybe how I'm not showing up, whether it's for myself, the people I care about the spaces I'm in. Um, truth in work. At the end of the day, I feel like I can't go wrong. If I'm radically true to myself and to the people around me, whatever the consequences of that truth are, those are consequences I've decided I can live with. Mm -hmm. And that's an empowering way to move through the world. Um, So I'm just trying to amplify truth. I try to amplify it in my stories, in my interviews. I'm always seeking it. Um, And now I'm trying to make sure that I'm living it always. Nice. I love that. You don't get the word. (laughs) <laughs> Damn, you gotta go first. You gotta that, okay. Next time you gotta go first. I'm really thinking about how she was gonna really explain hers over yours as you were yeah, like, I'd have said some more stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this real quick to go over there. <laughs> yeah, I'd have said you know, well, you did the root word have been rich. I'll tell you <laughs> this comes from the Latin word True. meaning to yeah. <laughs> this is you have to understand like this is not a put on this is literally the vibe and i think it's the magic of what you see when you see our pieces mm-hmm. and that and that's through an edit right like that's just through um someone saying i, I gotta get this in t- three minutes or four minutes or two minutes and 75 seven 17, nope, no two minutes and 17 mm-hmm. seconds because 75 seconds would have been more than then i mean minutes, we would have back to three minutes that um exactly. that's a little bit of math that does check out. That does check mm-hmm. out. yeah that's that's that's, for, that's why we're in television yeah. we don't crunch numbers we're like, i don't have to you can just be like, you be like this hey siri how many minutes in this piece no God. She trying to shazam something. See, she so my phone don't even do math. You know, this is what this is what we is where we are. But it, the, I, in all seriousness, I I so enjoy working with this woman. Mm-hmm. I so Same. enjoy calling her a partner in this business, a friend in this business. She has, in a lot of ways, also helped inform the way to move through this business with grace, mm-hmm. with confidence. Um, with truth mm-hmm. right she is a I think a beacon also on the carpet of like light and positivity um, you won't find anyone as far as I'm concerned you won't find anybody who is more professional um, who is more considerate um, and also shows up in a way I'm dead serious who also shows up in a way that reminds other people of like the the special quality within themselves right mm-hmm. because she's also Still that down ass chick, you know what I'm saying? She's still gonna beat you on wing night, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like real talk, you know what I'm saying? It, and she is she is the, one of the kindest people I know. And so when you see that energy in our pieces from the carpet or on the show, you're not seeing something that's manufactured. In fact, you're probably seeing something that's kind of been filtered a few times. Little down between us. Thank you for that. Yeah, Scott she's real. She's the best. And I love him too. Now I gotta lay out. <laughs> <laughs> I will just say this. I know we got to, we're running out of time, but again, like Scott and I have known each other for more than a decade and to watch the way that he doesn't just navigate the industry, but with so much intention, he says that he doesn't navigate or didn't early on with intention. And it may not have been, I want to hit this by this age, this by this age, but leading with his heart and being so intentional about how he wants to show up in those one-on-one interactions. That is something that has always impressed me about him. And what's really special is that it's the same energy 
on camera as off camera. I will watch Scott have a whole heart to heart and just be connecting with somebody with no, I'm like, Scott, no, that's beautiful. No, and I love that. No, that's awesome. But that's the car wash, man. (laughs) We've got to go. But seriously, it speaks to the fact that going back to that idea of seeing someone, right? Like Scott sees you and he takes the time to make sure that you feel that. And it is very easy in an industry like this one to come and go, to feel very insignificant. People are only as good as their next play, their next booking, and they only care about you so much as you can move the needle for Mm -hmm. them. And that is not Scott Evans. And so that's even something that I've appreciated at different points in our career. You know, I was a new kid on the block at Access at one point. And to feel that embrace and that welcoming energy from you, it means the world because sometimes people make it really hard in this industry. And to have someone like him who goes out of his way to make it easy on whoever he is sharing space with with or without a camera it's special and he's, he's a rare one for sure i'll be honest though she I remember when she came i'm gonna tell can i tell it tell what okay tell it. we sat out by the pond and she said listen it's an opportunity for me mm-hmm. can i tell it don't tell it i'm gonna tell it don't, <laughs> don't tell it i'm gonna tell it wait whisper it pull up she said she said it's an opportunity for me to do this thing but there's also this opportunity for me to do this thing what do you think I should do? <laughs> I would be like, girl, you better run for your life. <laughs> girl, you better run for your life. Where they say they're going to go? Girl, you better run. But there was like a presence of mind. Where it goes back to this, like, this idea she said, by this, I want this. And that's not like some superficial, not I want to be seen at this thing by this age. It was really like, intrinsically, these are things that, intrinsically these are the things that i want to see and feel in my life because they're going to unlock some other things i want to be able to do in my life and touch and empower people in my life and even while someone was saying no nah, girl i don't know if that's the thing yeah. she found this space in herself to be like appreciate your input mm-hmm. love you for it <laughs> not following that advice. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it and it has worked out for her incredibly. It is mm-hmm. she has made it such a, a a beautiful way for herself and for those coming up behind her. So mm-hmm. I th- she's she's the bomb. I you will not find me saying anything negative about her. Sorry. No, I do a 20 after we wrap. I'm gonna need That's what I'm trying to get. I'm back 10. I like you 10. How about that? 10 for the next five said, weeks. Okay. How we doing? How we doing, Michael? Oh, now you want to go. Oh, man. I'm trying to get this money right now. She want to go. This has been amazing. I really appreciate you both taking the time out here. I always want to make sure that I've had a great time, but I always want to make sure the other people have had a great time talking with me as well, too. Yeah. Thank you for your energy, your incredible questions. It's been so awesome to get to know you a little bit, too. Oh, thank you so much.